has brought you here today, I just want to honor deeply that dating can be so challenging. It can be confusing, it can be disheartening and discouraging. And there's often this feeling of, is there even someone out there for me, that right person? And the reason that Leanne and I created this today was first of all to say, yes, there is somebody out there for you. And there's somebody waiting to fill you with love and just light you alive. And the process to find that person can be confusing. And so what we are doing today is just shedding some light on this process. So Leanne, if it's good with you, I'll just kind of lay out a basic structure and then we can fill it in. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah, we have great. so much to share with you today. We're so excited. Yeah. So the first thing to recognize when you're, when you're dating, whether you've been dating for a long time or you're just beginning to date or you're about to begin dating, if we go in without consciousness and awareness around who we are as a lover and as somebody seeking partnership, if we go in without an awareness of what we need in relationship and what we desire to create, and if we go in without an awareness of the highest ideal outcome, then it's impossible to achieve it. And what we end up doing is without becoming aware of our needs, wants, desires, and dreams, we end up settling for things that are actually rooted in pattern or just rooted on like rooted in what we've learned from the past, like from our parents or other people that we grew up around who were modeling relationship. So the structure that I want to lay out today is based on a tried and true structure. I did it myself when I was dating and it works. And really it's a three part idea. Part one is looking at what are your habits and patterns in your past relationships? The ones that both serve you and the ones that haven't served you. Getting clear on what kind of people you've selected for partnership and whether that's aligned with what you really want. Because often we're inclined to select people that might not even be what we're looking for in relationship. The second part is getting really clear about now, the present moment. Who are you? Who am I? What are my needs in terms of relationship? What is the moment of life that I'm in? You know, if you're younger and you don't have children, you might be aiming towards, I want to find a partner to create a family with. If you already have children, you might be in a moment of, I'm looking to find someone to co-parent my children with me and potentially with an ex-partner, you know, in a, in a wider way. Or you might be in a place where you have grown children and you're looking to foster a deep intimate relationship at a later stage in life with an awareness that there are children in the picture, but maybe that's not necessarily the most important piece at this point. And why I say this is because, well, and there's a fourth possibility, which is there's no children in the picture at all and you want to keep it that way. And that's also really important. And why I say this is because often when we date, we need to know exactly what stage of life we're in and what we want to create out of the relationship so that we can select someone who is perfectly suited to fill the position we need. It's kind of like we're hiring for a company, but the company is just the life that we have, right? And who's perfectly suited to fill that role. So that's the second part. And then the third part is when we're, when we're at this point of really wanting to create a dreamy, deep, fulfilling relationship, what is it calling for from us so that we can rise to the occasion of being the ideal partner to somebody? You know, how can I show up in a relationship that elicits the best out of my partner, that inspires my partner to love me from her best? And so just really succinctly put, get clear on your past, habits, patterns, beliefs, get clear on your present, who are you and what do you need and want and desire from this relationship? And what are you here to give to a relationship? And then the third part is how to become the transmission of he or she who is ready and capable of showing up as the divine, like a, div a divine partner in relationship. So that's sort of the structure. And we're going to go into each of these things today. And so, you know, just looking at the first part, you know, what are the like the past habits and patterns and what are the self beliefs? I'm going to pitch it back to Leanne because this is her wheelhouse. Like, 
What is it we believe about ourselves that in the past has cultivated wrong relationship? What kind of partners have we selected? So Leandy, if you want to take it from here, how does our past inform what we end up doing? Oh my gosh. Yeah. I love this. The whole second module of my women's group program is called your past is not your future. And so a lot of what we're saying here is how do you alchemize all of your past heartbreaks, relationships that didn't work out and to really take what you really loved about those people or those relationships to look at the stuff that maybe wasn't so great and to be able to learn and grow from those. And so this is this is huge to be able to do. I've heard more and more people speaking about this. So I'm really glad that Max opened it with with these things that seem like the basics in one way, you know, getting really clear on where you are in your life. Um getting clear on what you're looking for right now to be able to look at our past to see how we can actually use this to grow in the next chapter of our life. These these might seem simplistic on the surface level, but they're actually pretty profound and deep. And what I see is that a lot of people actually don't take the time to do these things. And it's an ongoing process actually to, to do this, especially if you're out there dating right now. It can be something that comes off in layers and honestly, it just really ties to self-work in general. It really never ends. It's always, it's always continuing. And, and that's not a bad thing, right? I remember when I was dating for um, a couple of years after my divorce, it was something where I don't want to say it just like never stopped, but every single person that I came in contact with every, even if it was just a short relationship, it was material for me to use, to be able to see what was going on. And actually relationships are such a beautiful indicator of where we're at actually, because they reflect back to us exactly where we are. And so the thing I'll say, um, there, like there's so much to say here. Gosh, we Max and I could literally talk for hours about this. I'm trying to figure out the most concise way to say it. I think for women, what it boils down to time and time again is, and I know even I am tired of saying this, but it's true. It boils down to self-love and self-worth time and time and time again. The hundreds of women that I've worked with have almost all of them needed to go back and strengthen this. This is really just a reflection of kind of the collective female psyche. And this is generational stuff that has been passed um, down from our mothers, from our grandmothers. And so we're being called to really heal this. Men have their own work to do. And I'm not saying that men don't also struggle with self-love and self-worth, but in terms of the inner work, self-love and self-worth is primary for women, I would say. And so if I can really distill all of my own inner work and what I learned through dating, it was that I was settling for less than I deserved. And so each and every time I would kind of recognize that and then work on self-love and self-worth a little bit. And so like the layer would, would, you know, be shed of that. And then the partners that I would end up attracting would kind of rise in terms of the, I guess you could say the caliber, right? I don't love that word, but, um, but it's a reflection of kind of how you're doing. And so I hope this makes sense. The last thing I'll say before I pass it back to Max is everything that Max and I give you and the way that we teach is often trying to give you all of the tools to empower you to be able to do all this work on your own. We give book recommendations. We're telling you now, we're teaching you all the skills that you need, but the truth is, and so you can do it on your own, of course. But the truth is so many people actually need support. And so Max and I support people one-on-one. -on -one. We work with couples. We have a relationship program starting Saturday that maybe you can drop the link in the chat for people. And so it's, it's totally possible for you to do this on your own. But Max and I are here for you to help you along the way because we want to save you the time and the energy that we <laughs> expended on our own journeys. So Max, I'll pass it to you. Yeah, yeah, I love this. So to start with this idea of what do you deserve and, and really raising up your self-belief, like I deserve good love, I'm ready for good, like I'm ready for love. That's such a key piece. And I work with a lot of men and sort of the, the, the masculine side of that is often recognizing that you have the capability of lighting up the world. You know, masculine presence and masculine awareness is such a powerful way 
of just holding all that is and uplifting the, the you know the felt experience of of any of it whether it's love or whether it's you know leadership in any way so you know i think the core piece there's the individual piece like coming into alignment with i'm ready i deserve it i'm capable and then there's this other piece where you look at you know what was i taught about love and what do i need to learn right so when you kind of take an inventory of your past relationships, as well as the relationship you learned love from, you know, the parental relationship, what is missing from the equation that you need to foster and learn? And um, in the programs that Leanne and I run, you know, we often go over things like love languages and attachment styles and just really get clear on what don't we know that we need to know so that we can serve ourselves and our own needs in relationship as well as serve others. So you know, taking an inventory of where have relationships in the past not served my heart? Where was I, where was I not able to receive love? And how much of that was my own responsibility? Like I have love languages. Did I create space for them to be served? Did I create the kind of connection that fostered my love languages being met? You know, for me, it's affection. It's words of affirmation. I mean, it's pretty much all of them, but really my top two are affection and words of affirmation. So did I create an environment where I was able to receive those things? And then the second thing is, did I onboard my partner into my relational needs? So when I look back to the past relationships, I can start to see where I didn't take my need for love and my desire for love as a highest priority and create that in those relationships. So now when it comes to the present, really taking an inventory of what do you need? What do you want and what do you desire? You know, so for you to feel an experience of love, you know, what, what are your love languages? What are the things that really light you up and make you feel good? And the reason you want to know this is because when you're dating, there are ways that you can kind of discern whether the person that you're spending time with is capable of doing those things. So, you know, the more clarity we have on our own needs around love, the more discerning we can be when we date. And we can look at, you know, does this person feel like the kind of person that can fulfill my needs? Then there's also, you can just ask them, like, how do you love? What is your experience of loving someone like? What do you, what do, you do to light up a partner? And that's something that when I was dating, I didn't realize I could do until like halfway through my year of dating. And one of the most powerful things that I ever asked was, what does a relationship mean for you? Like, how do you do relationship? And when I asked that question, all of a sudden I got so much information that previously I just didn't understand how to figure out in the dating space. So, you know, the golden ticket for me and why I am now married is because when I met my wife on that first date, I said, what are you looking for in a relationship? And and she said, I'm looking for a relationship that I can practice love in and that I can really lean into the act and art of love. And I was like, wow, that's it right there. That's somebody who's on my level of consciousness around what's like what I'm capable of in terms of love. But it's also somebody who's speaking to active loving, love as an art. And it took a year of dating and, you know, pretty significantly dating a handful of people to find someone that really was willing and ready to show up in relationship. Um, you know, the next thing that I really want to point out here is setting love as a priority and a practice. Love, in some ways, the expression of love, we just expect it to come naturally, but it doesn't always come naturally. You know, love is a, is a two-person experience, sometimes more, but in, in the way we teach it, you know, we're really teaching for divine union and partnership. And so, recognizing that to love is an action. It doesn't just happen. And so really taking radical responsibility over, like I'm here to love my partner and I'm here to make sure in my case that she feels, you know, abundantly loved. And so what that really means is what are my relationship skills that I have? What am I good at? What do I need to learn more of? So often like, you know, there are certain love languages that I, give to my partner? What about the others? What can I practice doing more of? Especially if my partner is 
has more of something that I'm not naturally inclined to give. How can I lean more into that as a practice? That's something that you know, I teach and it's something that I do in my relationship. Now, fortunately, when I found my partner, we were pretty aligned on our primary love languages, which is really helpful because we kind of naturally are inclined to do the things that we both need. But there are certain things that fell in like the second and third tier of love languages that you know we both kind of have to work with. Like I have to recognize that one of her deepest needs in relationship is to feel safe and secure. And so I had to look at what is the, what is the way I can show up so that she feels safety, so she feels security, you know, both linguistically, but also in terms of my presence. Um, and how can I do that on a daily basis? That was something that I had to look at. And then for her, you know, my big thing, one of my childhood wounds is around invalidate, like validation and invalidation. And I'm really clear on that. And so I, something I gave to her early on in the relationship was the thing that really makes me feel safe and secure is validation. And so she gets to practice that and bring that into the relationship. And that might not be something that, you know, either of us are naturally inclined to do. Like I've never really thought about a partner that needs the experience of safety and security. And she might not have ever thought about a partner who needs to be validated. Um, but by bringing these into our consciousness, we can really engage this way. And so I know I'm getting into the actual act of relating, but what really matters here is clarity around what it is, like what it is, that you need to feel just fully filled with love. And so for me, physical touch, words of affirmation, I need a partner who really wants to love me and just is like really here for love. Um, I also, I, I wanted a partner that was capable of, you know, I'm a very intellectual person and I like to read a lot and I, I, like, I work very kind of individually. And so I needed a partner that was capable of giving me space for work and you know allowing me the space to do what i need to do um, you know for my purpose and so you know that's sort of how i want to draw out this second chapter i guess like if we do three parts right the second part of dating is ruthless clarity on your needs wants and desires because without that clarity we can't guarantee that we're selecting partners that can fulfill those needs wants and desires and you know i guess the last part that i'll drop in here is are you aligning with partners that are in the same season of life as you? So when I was dating, I was 36 and I was clear that I wanted children. I didn't have them yet. And I was also clear that I was open to two possibilities, which is somebody that wanted children or somebody that had children and was open to having more. Because what I knew is I needed, I wanted to have my own kids or at least have my own child. And that was a really radical diff like it was a huge difference from when I first started dating, I was just looking for someone that was willing to start a family together, right? And by opening the door to people that already had kids, I just all of a sudden opened to a whole, like a wider, you know, net of pos uh, possibility. And it was almost immediate that Kelly popped up into my field once I did that. Uh, so it's like, the more clear you are on what you want and want to create, the more discerning you can be when you date. And it's so important. So I feel like we kind of, you know, wrapped that middle section up pretty well. Is there anything else you want to bring around, you know, what you need to know about yourself? I love everything that you just said. And I, I also, if you wouldn't mind for maybe people who didn't watch the live in a couple minutes, after I finish sharing what I, I want to say, maybe you can just quickly take people through the structure that you used when you were dating, because every time I hear you say that it's really invaluable and maybe people didn't watch the live, maybe yeah. they didn't listen to the podcast where you also spoke to it. And I think it's such a good strategy. So I want to also just say to people who might be new to Max and I teaching together. I love working with Max because it's a very good combination of teaching and practical things that you could do and that you should keep your eye on in terms of right, like doing differently. Um, and I often speak of this, you might've heard me say it before, but it's also the energetic piece and the embodiment. Max works a lot with this. And that this is why we actually started out today with the guided meditation, because feeling that experience of love in your heart, like what that feels like versus when you are shut down, when you're closed, right? When you're so in your head that you're completely out of touch with your body and your heart, which 
there's no shame there. So many of us do this. I do this all the time. It takes a conscious effort to shift into your heart and to shift into your body to see what's going on. Because equally as important as the things that we should we should be doing differently or even the inner work is really this, this energetic piece. And so I don't want to sort of gloss over that. And I think for for some of you listening who maybe feel like you're doing all the right things, or you've been in therapy for years and you're sort of um, doing so much inner work and you don't know what else to do, you're kind of at a loss. You're banging your head against the wall. You're like, what more do I need to do to find my person? I would just really invite you to, um, to shift to the embodiment work, the energetic work, and start to work on that level because oftentimes that's the missing piece for a lot of people. So let me see here. I actually want to address, I was looking at sort of the outline of our class today. We mentioned we'll touch on methods to discern um, the right partner for you. So I wanted to speak a little bit to this, something that was really, really helpful for me. And I don't even know where I actually came to this conclusion, but it's something really simple that my clients just love because it's very easy to keep in the back of your mind when you're dating, when you're out there connecting with people. And this is the idea of a multidimensional connection with somebody. So if you're here with Max and I today, we know that you're not really here for casual sex or (laughs) just a physical level of connection. There's nothing wrong with that. That's just not the people who come to us. People who come to Max and I want something real, a deep connection, Um, to build a really incredible relationship with. And so four levels of connection that I look for when connecting with somebody are on the physical level, because I really do believe that we all deserve to have someone that we're incredibly attracted to. So physical attraction, emotional sort of heart connection. Can you feel this person's heart? Like, do they have emotions? Do they have feelings? Like, do they care for you? Do they care for, um, when you're out and about, you know, how do they, this is, this is, uh, I'm laughing because I heard someone just say this. How do they talk to the waiter? How do they talk to people around them? Right. If you can feel into their heart and you have a sense of like, okay, so they care, they care about people. Um, this is important for many of us who are looking for someone who's going to be safe and caring and loving. (laughs) And then beyond the emotional kind of heart connection, do you have an intellectual connection? How are your conversations? What are they interested in? Are you experiencing um, intellectual stimulation when you're with them? That's something that's really important to me. Do you have, you know, similar hobbies and interests and things to talk about? And then also the fourth level of connection is a spiritual connection. So this could mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. If you're not a spiritual person, then you can kind of forget about this one. It's fine. But this is really where you get into the higher realms of connection. And so it could mean a lot of different things. Are you generally speaking on the same page spiritually in terms of your beliefs? Do you feel like there's a higher reason why the two of you have been pulled together? Are you interested in using relationships as a spiritual path of growth and evolution. Max and I speak about this a lot. You can actually use relationships as a way to deeply heal your own wounds, your own relational wounds in particular, and just grow and evolve into your highest expression. So it's a very spiritual path, actually, relationships in general, even if you don't kind of call it that. And so I look for these four levels of connection with potential partners, physical, emotional, intellectual, and um, spiritual. So that that was kind of my primary method in addition to my intuition um, to discern potential partners. So maybe Max wants to add a little bit there. Yeah, there's two things I wanna to touch on. So briefly, you mentioned this thing about embodiment and the energetics, right? And this is so important because we can elevate into a different state of being. It's not bypassing truth, but it's actually exercising an expression that might be out of our norm. And so when I work with men, a lot of what I'm doing is I'm training, I'm training presence and awareness, right? Which is one of the like key components of what feels good coming from a man. And it's not that men 
don't want to be present or aware. It's that they just don't know what it feels like and they don't know what it, it, like the experience of it is like in their body. So when I train it and I train it over and over, gradually then become more present and aware. And then when I add in, you know, other energies like joy and play, and I train these things into the men that I work with in my men's workspaces, all of a sudden, it's not that they're bypassing, you know, the burdens of life or the way they feel about, you know, stress, but they're actually able to access something new in their interactions in love and relationship. And the why this, why this matters so much to me is because when I was dating, I kept running up against something very similar, which was people that were confused about what they wanted in relationship. They weren't really sure what they were looking for. And they weren't really sure how to show up in a way that felt good. And so I would go on dates and I would just be like, well, she seemed cool, but like, you know, I, I don't know, there was something missing. And it's not a lack of attraction or, or a lack of chemistry, but there's this other thing about, I wanna be in relationship with somebody that's here to show up, that's here to participate. And that was the same thing that my wife was looking for. So really that speaks to an embodied truth and it, it speaks to the embodied energy. And so if we're stuck in these places of holding discouragement or, you know, if we feel depressed or lethargic or just checked out even, and we're dating from that place, the only people that are going to select us are people that probably have some similar degree of not really ready to participate in a relationship. So getting clear on, am I showing up in, you know, in a dating space from a place of creation and from a place of energy that, you know, elicits is so important. Um, all right, structure. This is the best thing I ever did for myself. I've given this to so many people since, and in every case, it has helped clarify how to date. So I'm just going to drop it here and may it be a gift to the world because it makes dating so much easier. So when I was dating, I was using, you know, Bumble and OkCupid and uh, Tinder and all the things, and then also just, you know, meeting people through friends. And here's what I set up for myself. On the first date, it was either a yes, a maybe, or a no. And if it was a no, I didn't ghost. I with grace said, thank you. It's not what I'm looking for, but I hope you have a great day and good luck dating. If it was a yes or maybe, I would go on a second or third date. And what I was looking for was a hell yes. And so I would date up to six weeks. So five or six dates. And if I got to the six week point and they were still a maybe, I would just say thank you and bow out and move on. And I would do it in a way that allowed there to be, you know, grace and kindness, but also real closure on the moment. Because what you don't want to do when you're dating is leave doors open and create energetic hooks, because that'll affect how you're able to show up in future relationships. So first date, yes, maybe or no, if it's a yes or a maybe, second date, third date, fourth date, up until six weeks. And then if it's not a hell yes, then bow out and move on. And the thing about that is that it gives me the ability to more efficiently work with different possibilities. You know, I don't get stuck in six month or 12 month relationships that turn out not to be the right relationship. And that's often what happens is that we just get stuck because it's a maybe, but it never becomes a yes. And so really getting clear, if this person's not a hell yes, then I'm gonna move on after six weeks and I'm gonna keep going. Because the thing about dating is that the longer we stay in mediocre relationships or relationships that aren't even supposed to be a relationship, we're just still dating after six months, the more discouraging the whole experience feels. So it's really simple. No more than six weeks if it's not a hell yes. Making sure there's a date, you know, five or six dates in that period. And ultimately really just sticking to, it's a yes, it's a maybe, it's a no on date one. And then I'm looking for a hell yes within six weeks. So that's, that's the structure and it works and it's worked for so many men and women because it just helps clarify like, okay, I'm doing a thing. I'm in a process of selection. And if it's not working, I can move on with grace and love. It also allows you to create without creating too much uh, emotional connection. Around the eight week point, we start to get really emotionally invested. Um, it just, and so it's, it's, it's kind to, you know, complete relationships before you get too deep. Max, I, every time I hear you speak to that, it's just, it actually just makes me feel so calm because it's so clear. Having that structure is really, really helpful. It just removes any of the confusion, any of the uncertainty around it. And it just brings 
it brings such a logical structure to it. So I wanted to also just add another piece to the intuition. So during Max's structure, you can see that he actually was feeling into his intuition about every single partner, right? So yeah. what does this mean? And so for those of you who might have a great relationship with your intuition, amazing, you know, keep really relying on it, making sure that you're actually using that during the process of selecting your partner. And for those of you who maybe don't have a good relationship with your intuition, really start to bring this online. And so there's, there's so many books, information, teachers you can work with to get in touch with your intuition. And so what I'm really kind of telling you all is that the intuition is just as important as maybe um, some of the more logical pieces here, because both have to work together in this process. And so let's see here, because because I'm just reading um, the, the description, how to trust your intuition over impulse and confusion. I feel like if you can sort of couple the structure that Max just gave you, which can help you with the confusion part, and to start to, this is actually the last piece I wanted to say about intuition. For many of us who are working with intuition in a deep way, it's this constant process of really kind of figuring out, okay, what is like true intuition and what is actually this older junk that is still influencing the way that we see partners or the world. And so it's kind of on some level, it might feel like a lot, but it's as you're doing the inner work to really look at your old patterns, to really heal relational trauma or different hurts or heartbreaks from the past, you can be confident within yourself that you're actually doing everything that you can to really have that intuition. Sometimes we call it a clear channel to be as clear as possible so that you can trust it more and more as you're out there dating. Another thing that I'll say here is that look for the patterns over time. And so not only can you look in the past for the patterns in terms of the types of people who would, uh, who you would date, but you can also look for your own patterns of how you were, what kind of stuff would come up during relationships. And so this is another thing that can help you trust your intuition to make, to be able to rely on it and know that it's not the old patterns or habits creeping back in. And it's actually like kind of a clear signal to you. Do you want to say anything else about intuition, Max? I do. Um, <clears throat> So the thing about intuition is that it lives in the, it lives behind the nervous system. So impulse comes from the nervous system. It's based on emotions and energy, right? But intuition is the knowing and intuitive feelings. You know, there's a reason that we call it like gut instinct because it's not loud. It's very soft and subtle. And so if you're in the process of dating and you're trying to figure out, is this person right for me or not? The best thing you can do is actually bring practice into your moment, you know, bring in a meditation, try to clear out everything that you're feeling energetically, try to come into deep breathing and just calm your nervous system. And then ask the question, is this right for me? And just notice it's not going to be a cognitive answer. Intuition lives in the it's it's more it's like a spiritual part of us that lives outside of the realm of cognition and intellect. And so really, you know, is this person right for me? And then notice how it feels in your body in a softer way. And if a person is right for you, it's going to feel soft as what there might be a part of you that your nervous system is like, yes, but actually behind the yes, it should feel like a little bit like I'm coming home. Like, uh, yeah, I feel, I feel like home in this idea of being with this person. So that's what it, it's a good way to look at the intuitive experience um, and how to, how to check, like, what is my intuition telling me? you know? Yeah. Beautiful. I love that so much. And so looking at the time, we will wrap up in, you know, five or 10 minutes, we have a small group today. And so you can always type into the chat, any questions that come up from anything that we cover today, or just questions in general that you have about dating, we would love to hear. And for those of you who are watching the replay, you can always contact Max contact uh, either of us with questions. And so um, we have email addresses. You can reach out on Instagram. You can, you know, go to our websites and we are more than happy to answer questions that you have about dating. And so like, I guess what I'll say as one of the final pieces that I'll add here is when I think about conscious dating, it really is about 
bringing awareness to this process. And so it's actually not much more complicated than many of the pieces that Max and I talked about today. Bringing consciousness is bringing awareness. And so you're not just kind of getting out there and doing things on the fly. You're actually putting thought and conscious awareness into how you're showing up into, okay, so what is the inner work that I need to do here to prepare myself for love? Um, This is really dating in a conscious way. I also wanted to kind of throw in this idea of really good, crystal clear, open, honest communication. Max Max spoke to it earlier in terms of if it was a no for him on a first date, he immediately kind of said, you know, wishing you well, I didn't feel a connection. This kind of clear, open, honest communication is so key in this next chapter of not only conscious dating, but conscious relationships. It's, it's huge. You know, we're getting into this time where it's, it's not to anyone's highest good to be playing games, to, um, have a a more immature way of communicating to hold things back. We're all being called to step into more maturity and openness, knowing that, gosh, like I would be, um, I would much rather hear the truth in a kind way from somebody versus them just disappear. I mean, I know a lot of us feel that way, but sometimes people don't actually close it out because they're afraid of either having a hard conversation or hurting somebody's feelings. But really just start to think about this a little bit. It's much, much better for you and the other person if you're just open with love. Um, And so I think that's kind of the last thing. Oh yeah, one more. Can I just add one more piece as well? Yeah. There's a great book that I don't have time to kind of get into all of it, but it's called, um, it's called Calling in the One. This is a book by Catherine Woodward Thomas that I highly recommend because it really, takes you through a lot of the work that that Max and I were um, sharing with you today. So a lot of the inner work, in addition to very practical things, like is your space uh, prepared for your one to come in? What does your bedroom look like? Is there a place for him? Is there um, space for him to put his toiletries, his clothes, like, are there two nightstands, like all of these practical things? What does your space look like? Is it inviting? Do you feel relaxed in it? Um, This is just one example of the things that you can actually do both sort of internally and then externally in your environment to actually prepare for your person to come in. It's actually really fun. Yeah. So Max, have any last words? You know, I just want to come back to this. If you're dating right now, it's worth trying and it's worth really going all in on dating because when you do find somebody that can meet you in love, it's almost like you become more free. There's a freedom from being in a loving relationship and it's really worth fighting for. So, you know, doing the work to really get clear and, and, and be prepared to date with clarity is so valuable. Uh, it changed my life. And, you know, if it's something that you want to be held in, the last thing I'll say is reach out to Leanne or I, and there's a number of different possibilities. Um, I just held someone beautifully in this process of getting clear so that they could show up with clarity and dating. And it's not really difficult. It, it can be done pretty efficiently. And either one of us or both of us together can work with any of you, either live or on the recording. Um, so reach out because love matters and you deserve it. I love that so much. Yeah. And I'll just end by saying that Max and I have a goal of really having everybody find their person as quickly as possible. And yes, we have to trust divine timing, of course, but there are certain things that you can do to really make the process easier, make it flow better. And along the way, you really use it as a process for you to really get to know yourself deeply and get to know how you actually show up in a relationship. And so it's actually a very, very beautiful process. At the same time, I want to extend lots of compassion to those of you who are dating, who might feel frustration. Max and I know that very, very well. And that's actually one of the reasons why we now devote our lives to love, sex, and relationships, because it really, it does matter. It matters in a huge way right now. And so to everyone who came live and who's watching the replay, we are sending you all love. Please don't hesitate to reach out. If you need support, we're here for you and we'll talk to you all soon.